Hi and welcome to this video on rates of reaction where I'm going to be talking about the amount of product that's formed in a reaction, particularly reactions that occur at different rates, and about the timing of that reaction. So first thing to be aware of is that no matter what you do to speed up or slow down a reaction, the amount of product that will be formed is going to be identical if you have the same amount of reactants. Because actually the amount of product formed is just dependent on the amount of reactant that you start off with. And so if you're starting off with the exact same amount of reactants, you'll end up with the exact same amount of products. And here's the other key thing. Over time, you will end up with the exact same amount of successful collisions. So the actual total number of successful collisions isn't changing. It's just the total number of successful collisions in 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute per second, whatever. Okay, so it's not the amount of product that changes. It's the speed in which that product is formed. So this graph kind of illustrates that quite nicely. So we've got two different reaction rates. The one, the pink line at the bottom is showing a slower rate of reaction. The blue line at the top is showing a faster rate of reaction. What you've got on that y-axis is the total amount of product formed. And you'll see at the end of that reaction that both reactions finish off at the same point. They both have produced exactly the same amount of product. The difference though is that reaction A is finished in probably two-thirds of the time of reaction B, right? So reaction A is finished here, it's got that much product, reaction B takes all the way out to here. So that's the big difference between the two of them. Now, the rate of reaction is not a constant throughout the reaction, okay? The rate is usually, if you consider the amount of product formed per second as the rate, that changes as the reaction proceeds because at the start of the reaction, you have a large amount of reactant, you have effectively a relatively high concentration of reactant particles present in your reaction system. As the reaction progresses, those reactant products, uh, those reactant particles are turned into product particles and therefore the concentration of your reactant is going to decrease over time. Therefore, as the concentration decreases, we know the rate decreases. So the rate changes over time um, based on the relative concentrations of the reactants. Now, here is a kind of classic NCEA exam question on rate of reaction. Okay, so here we go. We've got a reaction in which two 20 ml samples of sulfuric acid were placed in separate conical flasks. One was in a water bath at 20 degrees and the other was in a water bath at 40 degrees. To each conical flask, 5 grams of zinc granules were added. The amount of gas produced is collected and measured over time and then graphed. So you've got two lines, line A and line B. The question asks you to identify which line on the graph represents 40 degrees and explain why they finish at the same position. So that's just what I've been talking about. So line B here is obviously your 40 degree line. And line A here is got to be your 20 degree line. Why do they finish at the same point? Because they've got exactly the same amount of reactants. They've both got 20 mils of 0.2 mole per litre sulfuric acid and they've both got 5 grams of zinc. Therefore, we've got exactly the same number of particles in there, so we're going to get exactly the same number of product particles formed. It's just that the 40 degree one's going to get there much faster than the 20 degree one. The second part of the question asks you to elaborate on the effect of increasing the temperature on the rate of reaction, referring to collision theory and activation energy in your answer. This is very, very common. So this is how I would answer it. So at 40 degrees, the reactant particles have more kinetic energy than at 20 degrees. This means that the particles will move faster and will collide with greater frequency, so there will be more collisions per second. Collision theory states that for a reaction to occur, particles must collide with sufficient energy and the correct orientation. 
Because the particles have more energy, they will collide more frequently, and as they have more kinetic energy, there is a greater likelihood of the particles colliding with sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy barrier. Therefore, because the particles are colliding more frequently and with greater energy, there will be more successful collisions every second, and this will increase the rate of reaction. And there you can see, first off I have talked about collision theory, I have talked about activation energy, I have got the key things about more collisions, faster, more energy, more successful collisions per second, greater rate of reaction, it's all tied together. It's not a hugely long answer, but it really um, ticks all your boxes effectively. So please do look at that. Um, look at your NCA exam papers. There's really not a lot more to say about rate of reaction because it is very, very much just a revision of level two, one. If you're not familiar with level one chemistry, then please do go and look that up and go from there. I hope to see you soon when I'm going to start talking about equilibrium, chemical equilibrium. See you there.